Good morning. Good morning. I'm here. The wards are looking, the Corey is looking for y'all. He's coming in. Speaking of Corey Ward, good morning. I'll tell you a story in a second, but uh, we are glad you're here at our 1115 service at Monroe First Methodist Church. Um, we are glad you're here. Thank you for RSVPing. Um, I like to brag on somebody as he walks in. Um, so, you know, y'all don't know this, but on the weekends at nights, you know, I, I moonlight as a sheriff's deputy. Um, Nobody likes to, they, they don't, they take me, take me seriously. But uh, this week, uh, between Joe was in a little accident, or Joe's back there, he was in a little accident this week, and the lady who hit his car decided to, uh, uh, you know, run away for a little bit. <laughs> and so we were able to, uh, to find her, and I called Corey, and he went from uh, Loganville to Monroe in like 0.5 seconds, <laughs> and uh, we were able to, to apprehend her. So thank you, Corey, for always picking up the phone for me. So I appreciate that. I'm not equipped to handle those situations, but Corey is, so very cool. Uh, a couple things. Um, if you have not, if you have never, and you'd like to, Wednesday night supper is at our church. Uh, again, we've got a great chef, and the food's always good, but you know now it's less, less about the food, more just of the camaraderie, and, and y'all seeing us, and us seeing y'all throughout the week. So if you'd like to eat with us, you can contact the church office. Uh, before noon on Tuesday, and we'll make sure you have a plate for you already packaged up. You just drive through, and we put it in your car, and you pay us. That's a great deal. So uh, that's on Wednesdays. Uh, as you leave, I think on this table, you will find uh, our kind of weekly messenger we're doing to keep you up to date on what's going on, also an up-to-date prayer request list. Uh, if you have someone that you would like to uh, put on that list, again, contact the church, and we'll make sure that goes out every single week. We also celebrate uh, anniversaries and birth dates and uh, things of that nature, so you can pick that up on the way out. Uh, a couple more things as October is slowly getting here. Uh, our pumpkins will be here the, the first Saturday of that month. I believe it's the third. Typically, it's going to come around noon, so you'll be hearing from me about that if you have a strong back. Uh, I don't care how tall, short, old, young you are. If you got a strong back and want to come move some pumpkins, uh, well, you can do that. And then the following Saturday is going to be uh, the Downtown Fall Festival. We're doing things a little bit different. As you remember, we've always done a big event here that was this exact same day as the Fall Festival. And we decided this year would be a good year to give our volunteers, volunteers a chance to be a part of the Fall Festival as well. So we're, we're going to have a spot downtown where we can gather and have some food and have music and have a kind of a hanging out time, but also be a part of the Fall Festival as well. So be on the lookout for that. Lastly, if you own golf clubs, if you live on a golf course, if you know what a golf ball looks like, um, or you just want to donate, uh, they'll take that to October 19th at the Georgia Club is our fourth annual Buster Harris Memorial Golf Tournament. Uh, if you don't know who Buster is, come find me one day this week and we'll talk to him, talk about him for about an hour. Just an amazing guy. I loved, loved him. He loved our church, loved the Sunday school class. And so we, we called our golf tournament, named it after him. An amazing guy. So our church golf tournament is October the 19th. Uh, if you want to play, if you want to sponsor, if you want to donate, if you want to come serve meals that day, or you want to come hang out and drink coffee, you can do that too. Uh, let me know and we'll get you signed up. So thank you in advance for those that are going to be a part of that day. And I think that's it. Let's go Lord in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for having the opportunity to worship inside your house today. Those that have come for the first time, those that have come since we opened our doors back, those that watch digitally, those that are, whatever reason, can't be here, Lord, we just thank you for them. Thank you for their families. Continue to bless our service, bless our worship time, those that lead us in worship. And Lord, no matter what happened, in the car on the way here, or in the parking lot as we walked in, or the type of week we had this past week, Lord, help us to start our new week with you this morning as we, as we connect, maybe for the first time. Here's the name we pray. Amen. Our hymn is now firm the foundation.
One of my top 50 at the very least, if not one of my top 50. Good, great job. I was singing along with you. Good morning. God is good all the time. And we only say it because we know it and we need to believe it and we need to breathe it into us every day. It, it, it is so good to be with you here today. Uh, the week continues. Uh, the pattern continues that every Sunday someone I haven't seen in a long time or maybe for the first time is here. And it uh, just ingratiates my heart, and uh, my joy of the Lord goes out to you, and it's so good to be in God's house with you. I pray you're being safe. I pray you're still living life. God puts us here to live life, not to hide from life. Some special things we need to do during this time, even in our own church. Um, our first funeral of this COVID season is happening tomorrow, and maxed up. So, so please pray for us in that one, but uh, good to see you. May we go down to the river to pray. Let us pray. Father God, in, in, in the midst of all the, I'm sure there's still fear out there and uncertainty. There's always uncertainty. We only have today. Remember yesterday, tomorrow. Ah, Lord, bless us to be at the best yet. In this time of unsteady ground, Lord, we, we ask you to steady us. You are the same today as you were yesterday, and you'll be for all tomorrows. You, you are the same for Isaac and Abraham and Jacob. You are the same for Noah. You are the same for Moses. You are the same for Adam and Eve. Lord, as you're going to be for generations and generations and generations to come. Help us not be like the Exodus people who every morning had to be comforted and assured you still were in existence, you were still on your throne, and you still loved us. Poor Moses had to assure the people of that every day. Help us learn from them, Lord from your holy word, from walking with you, talking with you, he hearing your word wash over our lives for weeks, months, years, decades, our entire lives. God, you are ours. You are steady. You are with us now. You'll be with us forever. 
Lord, help us to be faithful to you. So many strong, clamoring, stronger, more clamoring, even threatening voices in the world that would pull us aside, that would pull us left, right, high, low, anywhere but with you. Lord, that would rip us away from you. Help us to gauge our thoughts, our minds, our speech, our attitudes, the words we type out on screens or on little smart devices. Maybe you're not so smart. Users need to be smarter. Lord, just help us to be witnesses to you during this or any time. Lord, I believe that eyes are open or ears are open and our hearts may be, Lord, more open to, to a rescue, to, to, to a sure tomorrow than maybe in some time. And Lord, as Wes is going to preach to us a little later, Lord, we need to be the ones to do that. Because there's so much of the other, so much of the ugly and the mean and the nasty and the untruthful and taking people down a dark alleyways. Lord, there's, there's more of that than ever before it would seem. And especially for your disciples, those who pose ourselves under your teaching, your authority, your leadership. If for the first time ever, for the first time in a long time, if maybe just since yesterday, you would empower us, you would anoint us with your Holy Spirit, you would anoint us with the truth of your word and your love and your mercy and your grace, your forgiveness, your offering of life eternal. Through all of that, Lord, you would help us to follow you, to be your witnesses in Jerusalem and Samaria and the Mediterranean and all the world. We could bring more men, women, and children to knowing you, loving you, and receiving their life eternal in you. Lord, we continue to pray for this church and the ministry of this church. In some ways, in different ways, we, we are doing more than has ever been done here, this, this church on this hill. Different ways, for sure. Demanded upon us by the world, encouraged by you, but Lord, different ways. We pray for the ministry of salvation of the gospel through this church. Lord, all the churches in this fine community. Lord, we pray for Monroe, Georgia. We pray that you would keep us safe. You would keep this an ever-changing and ever-growing, but yet still a beautiful, beautiful place to call home. Lord, we pray for the state of Georgia and the southeastern part of these United States. Lord, we pray for these United States of America. That through any time, any period, Lord, we would return to the nation that many of our forefathers dreamed and wished, prayed that we would be. And that'd be a nation after your heart. A shining city on a hill. A new Jerusalem, even. Could we return to that dream? Not all the other dreams that other people would force us to fall in line with, but Lord, your dream, the dream that our forefathers and mothers dreamed through you, through your anointing upon them. May we return to being that. But then you would have grace and pity on our land, and then, Lord, you would heal us then. You would heal us. Lord, just praying you would open the hearts and the minds as, as your gospel is read and spoken upon and the holiness of the word that we are going to hear through music, through prayer, through our own prayers, through, through the powerful, true message of Pastor West this morning, Lord, that we would hear it. We would not tune it out. We would start our smart devices in our laps and our reading, and Lord, we would, we would hang with, in, in your house for such a brief period of time that we would hear your word and it would wash over us and it would heal us. Lord, you taught your children, you taught your disciples a very, very powerful prayer, a simple prayer, and yet also oh direct, and also oh deep and rich, and also oh powerful. May we mindfully, thoughtfully, in the Spirit, pray this prayer back to you this morning. By praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to invite the kids to come down for children's moment. He's like, oh, God, girls. I'd like to first say thank you for being so faithful to come to uh, the 11 o'clock service so I can have someone to look at and talk to. And you too, Kobe, because you, you also make a good effort to come to church when you're here with your parents. Um, oh, excuse me. Oh, sorry. Um, so none of you yawn, but that is supposed to get everybody. Did anybody else yawn when I did that? Okay. All right. So, and then if I start talking about something that itches, like in my hair, or if you've got mosquito bites, guess what? We're all going to kind of start itching, you know. That comes from a word called contagious, all right? You ever notice when someone yawns, you yawn too, except y'all didn't because y'all are just so big and fourth grade-ish and third grade-ish and you just don't want to do it, do you? <laughs> but contagious, you've heard that word a lot lately, right? And even before what's happened in, since March, contagious was the word that you didn't want to go to school if somebody had the flu or if somebody was sick and we were all taught to wash our hands, to use sanitizer. Well, today, Pastor Wes is going to talk about being contagious for Jesus. And that is also a very important way to show others that you love Jesus, is to be contagious in your actions, in your attitudes, in the way you present yourself at school and in front of your, your friends with your sports and whatever else you do outside of church. And I want you to make sure this week that it's your goal, that you're going to be contagious in the, in the good way. And I want you to use your, your attitude, I want to use your words, your smiles, and because guess what? People will want to be around you if you are contagious in that way. Because you know people at school that people don't like to hang around because they're, they say mean things and they're not very nice. Because sometimes if you start hanging with those kind of people, you're gonna end up that way too. So we want you to be contagious and be thoughtful and tell others, let others see through your actions that Jesus lives in your heart, okay? And I'm going to give, I know I've already given Ansley and them a, um, a book marker with a, with a smiley face to show you that God loves you and to remember to put a smile on your face this week and put it in your backpack or in your social studies book or your Bible and just remember to always, I know we have to wear masks, but you know what? what has anybody told you with your eyes you can smile? Okay? So be contagious with what comes out of your mouth and what comes out of your, your uh, thought process and with your friends, okay? All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for Ansley and for Lily and for Kobe, and we thank you for the families that are represented here. We pray that you would continue to bless them this week as they go out and show others that they are contagious for you in a good way. We pray that you'd be with all of us this week and help us to let your light shine through us. Amen.
That's impressive. <laughs> That's impressive. Gosh, thank you, Janet. You know, you ever had one of those weeks where you call it one of those weeks? A lot, yeah. And that, that's kind of where I'm at in it. And it doesn't always have to be a bad week. It's just one of those weeks, right? A lot of stuff going on, a lot of places to be, pulled in one direction or the other. And you know, this week for us, um, and we've even had the first day of the week off. And it was still one of those weeks. We had something every night you know, with, with kids' sports back in. We've got a big game tomorrow night, my five- and six-year-old flag football team. So if you want to come out and watch some rising stars, uh, I, I think Kirby, smart, and a couple of others are going to come watch them because uh, we've got some good, pretty good athletes out there. We've been sending him tapes, so hopefully uh, they can watch. But we're going to watch that uh, transpire tomorrow night. Avery had practice a couple of nights. We had a tournament yesterday. Um, you know, me and Corey get involved in a, a fun uh, <laughs> retrieval of a vehicle on the other day. And I just, again, you know, thank Corey and the Sheriff's Department for them responding to that. But probably the biggest thing is I saved a life on Tuesday. Y'all didn't even know. I saved a life on Tuesday. Um, it, uh, it took every ounce of me to do this, but I, um, I saved a cat from a storm drain on Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I know. It's a big deal. Um, you don't see that in the paper, but there was a kitten in our preschool uh, storm drain, and uh, I went down there and, and retrieved it. So uh, I survived. Everything was fine. Everybody's healthy. But um, that was the week, right? Fun stuff, stuff you can't make up, stuff you can't plan for, but it happens. That's what I love about this place. Fourteen years ago, give or take a week or so, I was just starting off in, in youth ministry in Milledgeville at the Methodist Church there. And I had a meeting with our pastor, uh, look, kind of overlooking our spring schedule and what was going to happen in the summer. And he said, there's something that you, that you have to do this summer with the kids, with the youth. And I was like, okay. This is something they have been craving for. They're hungry for it. And you just, you just have to do it with them. Okay, what, what are they hungry for? Uh, you've got to take them in June to Panama City on a beach trip. They're hungry for that. <laughs> so that who, who wouldn't be? Um, but picture this. I don't know if you're Panama City people. We are. We've gone every year for the last a long time. And I took 40 high schoolers to Panama City, and the condo that we rented or that we had, it was right next to Club La Vila. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> Who, who scheduled that? So, uh, so I took 40 high schoolers down there, had to pay some chaperones because uh, surprisingly people don't want to go do that. But there, there was this camp called Big Stuff, B-I-G-S-T-U-F. Some of you have heard of it, just one F, not two. And well-known camp, and they put on this every year for thousands of kids. They fly in, they drive in, they go down there, and they just have an amazing experience of worship and reflection and prayer and it's kind of building them up to go back to their homes after a week. So I went down there, and the keynote speaker was a guy named Stuart. Stuart was from Buford. Uh, he lives next to the University of Buford, if you've ever been there. Uh, some of you have, but it's a really nice high school. But the University of Buford. And he has uh, been in youth ministry his entire life, his entire life. He's now in his 40s, mid-40s, and I've, I'd heard about him before I met him. It's super old, Eddie, super old in his mid-40s as I'm knocking on the door of that. But he was, is an amazing communicator. And I'd watched some of his sermons and messages before. I was like, man, he's, he's got it. He's figured it out. You know, people are like, he's got it, he's got it. Well, the very first night, they had a meeting with all the youth leaders or suckers, however you want to call it, uh, in a room, and, and Stuart came in, and I was not awestruck, like I was a celebrity, but I'm like, man, I've been watching you the last couple months as I've been learning how to speak in public and all, and he either took pity on me, felt sorry for me, or he just thought that I was the guy he could talk to, so we hung out for most of the week, which was great, and he taught me so much about communication, not just, you know, person to person, but up here in these type of scenarios, how to talk to teenagers, how to be relevant, how to be exciting, how to get them fired up and not put people to sleep, stuff like that. And I learned so much from Stuart. Stayed in contact with him these last 14 years. He's kind of tracked where I've been. He's, he's very well known in the youth ministry world. 
Well, back in March, when our, our country, our state, uh, entered into this COVID-19 world, it had been going on for a while, but it was finally here with us. Uh, Stuart went to California and spoke at a conference amongst some youth pastors there. And on the flight back, he was made known that someone in their flight uh, had tested positive for COVID-19. And the whole way back to Georgia, he's, am I, have, have I been subjected to it? Was I, was I close to it? Was I with someone for longer than 15 minutes inside of six feet? You know, all these sorts of things. And sure enough, came home and the symptoms started. Loss of taste, loss of smell. But then it was the having trouble breathing. Felt like there was somebody sitting on his chest, he said. And it got to the point where he ha he's, he's a typical dude and didn't want to go to the doctor, didn't want to go to the hospital, but it got to the point where when you, can, when you can't breathe, what are your options? Goes to the hospital, his wife drops him off at the ER door, and she did not realize that would be the last time she would see him for about a month because they wouldn't let her go visit. So he goes to the hospital, he tests positive, his symptoms get worse, they put him in ICU, he, then he contracts blood clots in his legs, which then goes up to his heart, which calls what they call a COVID-induced heart attack. Uh, I put him on the ventilator twice, he aspirated on the ven in a ventilator, which calls a bacterial infection. So as the doctors are trying, it's called whack-a-mole, right? You, as you try to knock one thing down, four other things pop up. Maybe you've experienced that. It's terrible. Finally, these six doctors are around Stuart's bed, and he's in a coma, and they all look at each other and say, there's, no, there's nothing more we can do. So they call the wife, FaceTime with her. She's devastated. They got two young girls in college. They got a son who just graduated college, um, very well known in the community, and they, she's told that he's not going to make it. She gets off the phone. She tells her kids. You can imagine that conversation. Then she calls her pastor, who's pretty well known in Georgia. She calls Andy Stanley, and Andy wanted to go pray, but they wouldn't let him in. So the nurse that Stuart had put a blue heart on his window overlooking 85. And so Stuart invited, I mean, Andy invited his church to come to the parking lot one day and pray for that heart that they could see from the street without the Stuart's room. The very next day, uh, Stuart, and, and they are planning the funeral, by the way. Who's going to speak, where it's going to be, the music, you, you know, going through this whole order. She gets a call from a doctor and says, look, look, I, I know it's pretty remote, but I got one more thing I want to try. It's not going to hurt him. It may not help him, but I at least want to try it. And they did what they call a plasma exchange on a Friday around 2 o'clock um, with little to no hope of it doing anything. By the next day, around 2 o'clock, uh, he was awake, foggy, still in a daze, agitated as you would imagine, but awake. They gave him another plasma exchange. Then by Sunday, around 2, he was sitting up in his room in the ICU. By Monday, they transported him to a regular room, and by the next Saturday, he was home with his family. So this virus is out there, and it's contagious. It's contagious. But perhaps the most, the most contagious thing that I've seen, other than the virus, is fear. I feel like this, this fear that's, and maybe we're kind of coming out of it a little bit. I think we are in regards to the fear part. But there was a while where it was pretty, I mean, schools get shut down, businesses get shut down. Your 401ks, uh, what? <laughs> it's not 401, it's a 01 now, okay? I mean, it's watching the stock market. We can't go to some stores, we can't go to some restaurants. We, we're gonna hoard things, we're gonna get toilet paper and paper towels, like that, like paper towels is gonna do anything, and, and we're gonna keep it away because like, you can't find them anywhere. Churches are emptied, schools are emptied, airports are emptied. Wow, it's scary. But for some, it needed to be scary. 
for some that have weaker immune systems or they are caring for a loved one that's elderly. I mean, I, I get it. There's a fear there. We have to, somebody the other day said, I just can't come back to church yet because my mom is in Atlanta and I have to care for her and she's sick. I, I get it. That's not fear. That's being smart. I, I get that. There's people that have lost their jobs. My father-in-law does trade show displays. They're not doing trade shows right now, right? And that's just one of them. There's business that may never come back. There's people that are having to figure out, how do I feed my family? How do I pay the rent? Because that, those things still come. Fear is contagious. It doesn't take much fear to spread uncontrollably. I'm not really living in fear now, but there was a time in March where I was. We had just, Ashley's granddad passed away early in March, and I did the funeral, and that was the week that everything shut down. I mean, that was the week, I mean, that was that Thursday, you remember, SEC, all the, everything stopped, schools start, by the weekend, there's nothing, but we still had a funeral in person, and that, after that, after that funeral, Ashley came to me, and she's an ER nurse in Saint, at St. Mary's, and she said, I gotta tell you something. I said, okay, and she's like, I had our first COVID patient today, and I was, you know, I cared for her for seven hours. I said, what? You mean this thing isn't still in China? Isn't that how you felt? Like you felt like, oh, it's over there. It's never going to get here. It's never going to happen to us. It's never going to be in the hospital that she works at. It's never going to possibly be in our house. I was a little fearful. Luckily, everything was okay. But then I started wondering, well, what if I'm a carrier? What if I don't have any symptoms? What if I'm carrying it? What if I'm spreading it to Dane, who then takes it home to Marty? Or then, I mean, what if, what if I'm a carrier? What if it spreads? As Lisa said earlier, let the cat out of the bag. We didn't put that cat in the bag that we found. It's safe and sound, but we don't want the cat out of the bag. But You are a carrier. Not just a few of you, not just the older ones or the younger ones. You are all carriers. You're carrying something, I should say. You're carrying something. When people get near you, they catch what you have. They do. You're a carrier. But the million dollar question is, is what you're carrying worth catching? Is what you're carrying worth catching? Because we're all carrying and catching things daily. Our scripture is a little short and sweet, which I like. In 1 Thessalonians 1, verses 2 and 3. It's a New Living Translation this time. Paul is writing a letter to some people that are a little apprehensive We'll say, I don't want to say fearful, I can't speak to them, for them, but maybe apprehensive would be a good word. Talks about the faith of these believers. Verse 2. We always thank God for you, for all of you, and pray for you constantly. As we pray to our God and Father about you, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and your enduring hope you have because of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to read verse 3 one more time just in case we, we weren't there yet. As we pray to our God and Father about you, we think of your faithful work, your loving deeds, and your enduring hope you have because of Lord Jesus Christ. It's the word of God for the people of God. Amen. What if while I'm walking around town or doing what I'm doing, if I hear people talk about your faithful work, your loving deeds, and your enduring hope, how cool would that be? I got to tell you about this guy. He's just got this awesome faith. He's always doing people or other, and he loves Jesus, and he's just got hope. That, wouldn't that be amazing? That, that when you ask people about you, those are the things that they say. And maybe for most of you, that's what they say, or maybe it's not. We're all carrying something. And we're spreading what we carry. Is it worth catching? But if you have faith, love, and hope, if you have those three things, why do you have them? Where do they come from? Just because you had a good family or you follow the law and you abide by the lay of the land? Or what, what, why, why do you have those things? In our scripture, it says, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have those things. And then in verse 5 it says, For when we, when we brought you the good news, it was not only with words, 
but also with power. We brought you good news. Imagine how quickly the news that there is a vaccine or there is a treatment or something in regards to COVID-19. If that happens, imagine how quickly that good news will spread. It'll be viral, no pun intended. It'll go everywhere, super quick. That's good news. But there's some more good news that a vaccine may not be able to fix. Physical sickness, yes. Spiritual sickness, not much of a vaccine for that. I can't go to CVS and pay thirty-two fifty and get a shot for that. Jesus didn't come for the healthy, thankfully. He came for the sick. He didn't come from the righteous, or as Dane said last week, the self-righteous. Came for sinners, and thank, thank goodness for that, because I'm in both of those categories. Are you? And what's also great is our God didn't just shout from heaven, everything is going to be okay. He came down and lived and dwelt among all of us and saved us through his grace and his love. That's some good news worth spreading. And I'll ask it again. I'll tell you first, I'm going to ask you, you're, car- you're a carrier. You're carrying something. Is what you're carrying worth spreading? 1 Thessalonians 1.8 And now the word of the Lord is ringing out from you to people everywhere. The word of the Lord, the good news, is ringing out from you to people everywhere. For wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith. That's pretty powerful. Everywhere we go, people tell us about your faith. Ringing out, echoing, spreading everywhere we go. But see, that's what happens. When, when people catch a passion for Jesus, it starts to spread. And it goes viral very, very quickly. Remember when Jesus raised the little girl from the dead in Matthew 9, 26? News of this spread throughout all the region. Or maybe when Jesus cast out evil spirits in Mark 1, 28. News about him spread quickly over all the region. Or maybe when God uses his, his disciples to do miracles. In Acts 6, 7. So the word of God spread and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. Why? Because of people's faithful work, loving deeds, and enduring hope being contagious. But fear is contagious. We've seen that. We still see it. But so is faith. I don't know about you. I'm a carrier of something. And what I'm carrying is going to be a faith spreader, a love giver, and a hope dealer. That's what I want to spread. Not the other stuff. I wrote down you could be a fear spreader, a grief giver, or a negativity dealer. We've got plenty of those. Those spots are filled. They are. Those seats are taken. But we need to be faith spreader, love giver, hope dealer. People are going to catch what we're carrying. They will. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are going to be full of faith, not fear. Jesus didn't come for us to go hide in our rooms, hide in our homes, and just take care of our own to get through this, and then we'll come back and we'll be the church one day. Go into the world, let your light shine. But on the same token, for those that can't gather physically, and there's a ton of reasons why. And I understand. You don't, have to, you don't have to rationalize it with us. Everybody wants to rationalize it with us. Well, this is why I'm not. You don't have to tell us that. Just do you. Do what you feel like is best. We're here whenever you're ready. But for those that can't gather physically, and there are many, we can gather digitally. We can be digital evangelists. So that, that was, we're not televangelists. That's what we thought we were for six months. But we can be digital evangelists. You all have a platform. Most of you have email. Most of you have some sort of device or some sort of Twitter or whatever else you got. There's a lot of good news worth sharing. A lot of good news worth sharing. You can follow, you can comment, you can share, you can invite. You can be a faith spreader and a love giver. Can we spread more things about Jesus and less about what so-and-so said in a press conference? 
I'm tired of seeing that. I really am. I mean, I, I don't care. If we share more of Jesus, then some of that stuff won't even matter. Jesus is going to know you are his disciples not by how many followers you have, not by how many political posts we have, not by how much bottled water we've got hoarded away, or how much hand sanitizer we've got in the closet, or toilet paper we took. John 13, 35, he will know by what? You know this, by loving one another. Loving one another and being good news spreaders. Faith spreader, there's a good message right there. Faith spreader, coming in. Love giver and a hope dealer. And we've got a hope that no virus can take away from us. Have you found yourself saying this, any? I just hope things go back to normal. Gosh, I just hope things go back to normal. I've got so much more hope than that. <laughs> I, I really do. I don't, normal wasn't really that great now, was it? It really wasn't. Normal for me was just running from one event to the other, from run speaking engagement to the other, from one ball field to the other, and it never stopped. Can't wait till Friday. Well, then Friday comes. Oh, gosh, I got to date next Friday. Just making it through. Some of y'all have been there, done that, and bought numerous T-shirts from this, Right? That's just where I'm at. Normal was comfortable. It was maybe selfish, just speaking for me. Spiritually safe, yes. Spiritually lukewarm, could be. I believe this can be a wake-up call, a wake-up call for us. A time for the church to unite and come together, stand together, stand strong, stand bold, and do something a church hasn't done before. It shine in the darkest of times. So I've got hope, and my hope is not in the government. I pray for them. Absolutely, I pray. I don't care who wins in November. I'm going to pray for whoever's in there. I'm not going to not pray for them. Okay. My hope's not in the government, but we're going to support our leaders, those that protect us and keep us safe. Absolutely. My hope's not in doctors, and doctors have saved a lot of people. Talk about some selfless people, doctors and nurses. We got a couple in the room who go above and beyond to keep people safe and healthy, and that's amazing. So if you're in the medical field, we pray for you. I'm not putting all my hope in you, though. My hope isn't in the spiritual leaders, because what have we seen time and time again? They fall. Time and time again, they fall. We pray for them. I can't put all my hope in it. But my hope is in the one who spoke the word, and everything came into being. My hope is in the all-knowing, the all-powerful, the ever-present God of the universe. My hope is in the one who he heals the deaf, opens blind eyes, and brings people back to life. The one that saved you and the one that saved me. Because I'm a faith spreader, a love giver, and a hope dealer. Because of whom, you may ask. A name that maybe you can't say some places. It's Jesus. Who is he? Who is he? If someone asks you, who is he? He's the door through which we enter. He is a spiritual bread that gives us strength. He delivers the captives. He restores the broken. He strengthens the weak. He's our provider, our comforter, our source, our strength, our redeemer, our rock, our sustainer, our assurance, our firm foundation. He's a shelter in time of trouble. Not a place to hide from it, though. Shelter in time of trouble. A light when the world's dark. Prince of peace, Lamb of God, Alpha and Omega, resurrection of the life. At his name, darkest, darkness trembles. and his presence, demons flee. Death couldn't defeat him. The grave couldn't hold him. And because of that, I'm going to have faithful work and loving deeds and enduring hope. Not to make myself feel good. I felt pretty good rescuing the cat, but who the heck cares about that? It's about what Jesus has done and what he's going to do. Because fear is contagious, but so is faith. Hate is contagious in whatever form it presents itself. Hate is contagious, but so is love. And one that I struggle with, worry. Are you a worrier? I am. Worry is contagious, but so is hope. And I hope, and I know, I'm speaking to some carriers. You're carrying something. You're spreading something. Think about it this week. 
What are we spreading? What are we emailing? What are we texting? What are we posting? What are, I've got a conversation tonight with a lot of youth about that. Big one. Pray for me on that one. A big one. What are we putting out there? What are we selling? Is what you're carrying worth anybody catching? The good news is, if you're dealing in faith, hope, and love, that's going to spread fast. The bad news is, if you focus on fear, grief, and negativity, that's going to spread fast too. We need more of the other. And when our world grows dark, our light should shine brighter because of what Jesus has done. Let's pray. Lord, we have hope in you. We put our trust in you. We put our faith in you. Everything we have is in you. Not in a, a thing that scrolls at the bottom of the screen on the news stations. Not on the website we check for our retirements. Not for what's going to happen in November or next November or January or tomorrow. Our hope is in you. Forgive us for the times that we've put our hope in other things. Forgive us from the times we've fallen short and we've trusted in other people and other people's opinions than yours. Lord, today as we leave this place, help us to be excited. Help us to be rejuvenated and know that we are carrying the good news of Christ to everybody we meet. It's our responsibility to spread it. And if we do, it will go viral for your glory, not ours. Here's something we pray. Amen. Our hymn is Hymn of Promise. <laughs> I want you to be excited. I really do. I want you to be excited and encouraged and go out and carry something and help something spread. But no matter where you go this week, whether you go to Longhorns or to Applebee's, I don't care what you do, but spread that way. I just got a message just a second ago uh, from a youth that's going to a soccer game right now, and she watched our message, and she's encouraged to be a faith spreader on the soccer field today. That's all it is. It's just doing the right thing. So thank you, Haley, if you're still watching that. If not, you know, sorry, you missed a shout out. But... So, Lord, allow us to go from this place. Allow us to be encouraged and excited to know that we have the ability to change the world. We have the ability to make your name be known across every part of this county and this state and this world. It's a great responsibility. You've invited us to be part of it. Help us to be encouraged, to spread our faith, to do good works, to trust you, to love you, 
and allow others to be, <laughs> to be contagious as well and spread it to all that we see this week. And all God's people said, amen.